the manual zoom out. Cheap budgeting tricks 101 with majority. Welcome everyone to a post-play discussion of Fire Emblem Echoes, Shadows of Valencia. It's been a long time since I've done a post-play discussion. The video format is more likened for games that I just want to like play right through and then talk about as soon as I finish them. I mostly do it with RPGs because RPGs are kind of a pain to record a review for. And usually it's just such an investment of energy and time that I really do feel impassioned to talk about them. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about why I was able to just blaze right through fire, emblem, echo, echo, echo. You came for the puns. I know you did. You probably left because of them too, but I'm done. <laughs> I'm done with puns. The post-play discussion starts here. Okay, Fire Emblem Echoes. This was not even on my radar. I, I knew it was coming out, but I wasn't interested. And I'll tell you why. You know, Fire Emblem's cool, but I'm not really that into it, surprisingly. I found myself liking strategy RPGs less and less. Um, but I have liked that the direction that Nintendo has been taking with them. I don't know that the company that did this one, Intelligent Systems, if they're also responsible for the other 3DS ones, but um, to me it's like they keep getting better and better with each one of the ones that they come out with. And this is like the grand coming together of concepts and a great step forward for this series. And I'll tell you why I bought it. Um, you know, I wasn't going to buy it, but for some reason I saw it in the store. And I was thinking about like what I knew about the game. And I was thinking about 3DS in general. Present. And um, yeah, I, I got excited. I got excited about like the whole 3D dungeon crawling. It's on the back here somewhere. Um, I got excited about the characters... And I, I got excited about the concept, like the warring states kind of thing. You know, I remember when this series was little more than like a trophy you could collect in a Super Smash Brothers game. Now you can actually collect the trophies with Amiibo figures. So I like where they're taking the series and I was excited to check it out. And it really did kind of blow me away how good it was like how good everything was that was like put together so at, at its heart this is a fire emblem game but i'd like to argue that it adopts some of the framework that makes shin megami tensei 4 such a great game on the 3ds as well you know nintendo recently partnered with atlas to bring us that fire emblem smt persona crossover so i think they're kind of learning like what makes Atlas games so great and they're trying to apply it, which I think is great. I think it's great that they're trying to, um, first off, try new things, but keep the framework like, I don't know, respectable to both. Respectable. No, um, there's a word, but I like that um, it's not like they're becoming stagnant with the series. Like the 3D dungeon crawling, um, this game had full voice acting, I'd say... 95% of the game was voice acted, which is astonishing compared to Awakening, which I played, had maybe like 20%, if that. The game has more of a focus on art. A lot of times you'll see still portraits of characters, and you'll, you'll still hear the conversation going on. And they, they make tweaks to make this more cinematic. Like, you know how in an RPG, oftentimes it feels like you're just pressing the buttons when the story feels slow. It's like, come on, just get on with it. You can actually auto-advance story, which I thought was like a seamless way of telling a story. It's like you actually hear it spoken back to back. And the voice acting is authentic. It feels genuine. See this? We have the same mark. 
Yes, except yours is on your left hand and mine is on my right. Well, that makes us close, uh, doesn't it? <laughs> I suppose it does, in a strange sort of way. I wonder why the marks are so similar. It's because they're special. They prove that the two of us belong together, always. That is, if you're not already tired of a clod like me making you laugh. Of course not. I think that's where, like, they kind of borrowed the Shin Megami Tensei framework. You know, the dungeon crawling, the portraits, and the voice acting. But at its heart, it's still Fire Emblem. This is a game... This is a game. This is a strategy RPG, first off. And it's very much in the vein of Awakening if you played that, but not identical at all. Weapons don't break. Relationships are far less complex. It's not like there's intermarriages and children or anything. It's literally just bonds that you form with select characters. And... The strategy element is kept in place. It's, you know, it's sincere. It's challenging. It's a tough game. You actually have to think about where you position your units before you go into every map. So in that respect, it holds true to the genre. It makes you think. It makes you think about what you're going to equip your characters with. If something doesn't work, you try something different the next time. So you kind of have to play the field which is important in a game where you fight on fields. All right, I thought I was done, I'm not. <laughs> but in terms of content, it's where the game really won me over in a sense. I mean, a game's great with great gameplay, but story is like the glue that holds everything together, especially if it's cinematic. And I'm not gonna lie, it felt slow at times, but conceptually, this is, this is brilliant. This is a game about binaries. It's a game about two characters, two lifelong partners, bonded by fate, yet separated from childhood, who weave their way back to each other, who fight for respective kingdoms and respective values, who fight in a time where not just empires, but gods are warring with one another and with mankind. And in that respect, I thought Fire Emblem Shadows of Valencia is brilliant because it's a game that delves into the questions of humanity and who is humanity to challenge the gods. So I don't think it's like very thought provoking. I don't think it, it challenges a lot of notions, but I think it takes a nice path to deliver an experience for you that's more than just bloodshed. Whatever lies at the end of these corridors possesses a frightful aura. It sets the hairs on the back of my neck on end. The lord of this temple awaits, and here I am, terrified of him. Let's press on if we are to put an end to this long war. On that note, it takes a while to get there, and that's due in part to two things. And one is um one is the gameplay. This is a strategy RPG, which is admittedly not my favorite genre. I find oftentimes that SRPGs take a long time and this is no exception i actually the reason i'm not big on the fire emblem series is because i don't like the permadeath sorry i don't want cyclists to hear my conversation <laughs> um i'm not big on permadeath because i feel like i keep playing the same mission over and over again even if i'm playing on casual uh, so what i do is i play on hard so i still have the challenge but where I don't lose the units afterwards. The 3DS offers you that. That's actually why I haven't finished the GameCube version that uh, Boston Burf sent me. But at that same time, it takes me like 40 minutes to an hour to play through any one mission. And when you just play through one mission at a time, it feels like you just played an hour to go nowhere. And when the game is broken up into two storylines, it really feels like you're going slow. So... On one end, the gameplay slows things down. On the other, a lot of the story details 
I don't want to say feel redundant, but they feel repeated unnecessarily. Like, there's a huge discussion on class conflict that emerges from some of the characters. And a lot of times it just felt dry and stale and trite. It felt overused. Not just for the game, but like as a theme in general. Which is fine, I get it. You know, you're taking a look back at the romantic European model of thinking and what people think and you're challenging these notions, but um, it was over overkill a little bit. And the uh, relationships too were... I don't know. It, it really wasn't like that well developed. Like oftentimes I found myself just kind of like skipping through the relationship dialogues as they were occurring because they just weren't interesting. But at that same time, characters are likable. They all have personality. The dialogue that they say is fun, you know, especially mid combat, like when they level up or something. Don't count Tobin out. <laughs> Like, we fight for our people. I don't remember all of them, but like the Tobin line just stuck with me. Um, it's got character. Game's got character. Character's got character. It's so meta. <laughs> Also, I like that the game throws some curveballs at you and that you do have that choice of variety. So let's talk about the curveballs first. Uh, you know, the, the game does have terrain bonuses, so you have to think about like how your characters traverse a plane in a, any given level. Like what, um, what are they going to do to bond, band together, to protect your other units, um, to get the best advantages. You also have to think about like setting up the map and a lot of times you need to revise if something doesn't work, whether you're playing on permadeath or not. And the game is very fair too. Like you get a lot of bonuses. You get to find equipment in your dungeon crawling that's going to help you on your quest if you do a little exploration. You get to upgrade or like temper your weapons. You don't get a lot of funds to do it, but you do have the option, which I thought was nice. You also have this object which is called the turn wheel which allows you to go back in time to reverse any kind of mistakes that you thought you made or if you want to do something better. And the more cogs that you collect for this turn wheel, the more turns you can take back in any given match. I'm pretty sure it's per match, not for the whole game. It's not like limited in that way, but it is limited. So it's not like you're spamming it. But I definitely used it towards the end of the game. And in general, like, I, I guess I wouldn't have played through this whole game if I didn't have that care for it. It's a gradual experience where you get to find both sides of Alm and Celica and the empires of Regel and Zofia and see their stories kind of grow naturally out of the characters, out of the conflicts. It's actually beautiful. It, it reminds me of like Dragon Quest IV when they all kind of come together. So immediately, like we're comparing it to Dragon Quest and Shin Megami Tensei, like you've got a winner right here. This is not just Fire Emblem anymore. This is like the next stage for Fire Emblem. And by the end of the game, you know, Awakening kind of won me over a little more at the end, but I think this was the stronger title. You know, this definitely had its moments. And the final act was like, I don't know what you'd call it, like almost like the grand finale of a play or something. It's, it's really outstanding what happens like by the end. The big thing I think is to, to go in head first, balls deep, post play, you, you gotta be in it to win it. And I didn't really expect that I was going to be. But for some reason, I just, I, 
I was devoting so much time to it. If you look at my activity log, this game has the highest average playtime of any game in my collection. Like two hours at a time. Like I would be playing this game and I just wouldn't want to put it down. I'd be playing on the train. I'd be playing it at home. The handheld format's perfect. And all in all, like the package was just really nice. You know, this is a good fusion of ideas. As far as I know, this is some kind of like successor or reboot of the first Fire Emblem game. Don't quote me on that, but that's what I heard. But at the same time, it borrows all these kind of modern concepts. So I, I really liked it for that. And I would totally recommend getting it. You know, I don't think this is going to be like the legendary Fire Emblem game that's talked about for years to come. Like Path of Radiances or Awakening. But I do think that this entry is really pushing the limits of what the console can do and what the series can do. And I think it's really paving the way for this series to become more of a household title. You know, they had that whole mobile game, but, but 3DS, this is where the art is born, right here. Anyways, that's it. Fire Emblem Echoes, post-play discussion. Majority back on cam, baby. Ooh, yeah. We did an extreme close out. Let's do an extreme close in. And we're going to drag it out, just like the game. <laughs> Joking. Anyways, till next time. Love your games. And love your YouTube. That was bad. I got to work on that. Ha, ha, ha.